Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Canada. I hope everybody is having an awesome week. I hope you're all strong, healthy and staying productive. Students, in this class we are looking at an IELTS reading band 9 about abstract art. It's a challenging reading. It's a reading section three in the academic IELTS. Again, for the general IELTS, section three can be quite similar to the academic IELTS reading passages. So when you are going for those high band scores like band eight, band nine in the general IELTS, it is absolutely a good idea to look at the academic IELTS reading passages as well. Uh, welcome, Laura. Uh, of course, this is a members chat class. If you'd like to become a member of our YouTube channel, just click the join button next to the subscribe button. If you do not see that, send me an email. I will share my email address in just a few moments. Uh, welcome for us. Nice to see members joining into the class. Students, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. For the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. We have over 100 hours of video lessons, interactive courses, and practice exams for you. Uh, these materials that we're using today will be coming from our uh, courses, and they look like this, our websites. This is our academic IELTS website here. Uh, you can use uh, a discount code that I'll show you in just a moment. When you join, click this big red button to access our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We are an official British Council IELTS Test Registration Center online and certified agents. You can check out our certification logo there. For the general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. Again, click this big red button there to join uh, our premium package. Again, it's well worth it. And we released a new video a couple days ago which warns candidates about using the words things and stuff in your speaking and writing sections. Definitely do not use those words. Use better nouns and that's why we have uh, this special discount code to remind you of that. It's a 25% discount off of our courses and it's better nouns uh, 25. So make sure to use that code. Of course, you can get our apps, uh, Academic uh, IELTS Help, General IELTS Help in your app store. Um, and you can uh, also follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore AE Help and G IELTS Help. So join us on Instagram, join us on our websites and begin learning for success. We've got lots of classes, so after this reading class we will have a listening part one and two practice where everybody will be able to join the class. Welcome Crizil Monticello, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Good to see more members coming into the class. If you have questions, students, just send me an email, um, adrian at aehelp.com, uh, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. <clears throat> All right, so let's get into our reading passage for the day. Uh, this reading passage is about the aesthetic merit of abstract art. I'm kind of hiding the rest of the title there, but don't worry about it. You'll see it in just a second. Um, so. When we have a difficult uh, passage like this, especially one that's a little bit tricky to visualize, I've got this beautiful blue looking painting um, behind me uh, here. We have to take a couple of steps uh, before we begin reading to make sure that we maximize our score and really get as close to that band nine, hopefully on that band nine, uh, to answer the question. So. What we want to do first, students, is we want to look at the uh, image that's provided, okay? 
Um, and then we want to think critically about this. So here's the image again, looking into our exam book. Okay. And uh, again, this is the title is The Aesthetic Merit of Abstract Art. Now, even the title here is somewhat tricky. So, you know, we might be thinking like, well, what does, what does that mean? The aesthetic merit of uh, abstract art. Welcome, Rashika and Kyber. So, what does this, uh, what does this really mean? Okay, and um, before we look at the questions, your first step is to use the title to understand the passage as much as possible. So step one, uh, use the title to predict and understand the passage. Now, you um, might be thinking like, okay, well, I'm not sure what the word aesthetic means. Um, I'm not sure what the word abstract means, but you probably know the word merit. A lot of students know the word merit. Uh, what's another way to say merit? Okay. And on the IELTS, a really, really important part of your attitude is to focus on what you know and don't worry about what you don't know, okay? Okay, so don't worry about what you don't know. All right, let me put that up a little bit higher. So this is the right attitude for IELTS students. Sometimes, you know, I do see that students are worrying about, well, I don't know this word and I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know this and I don't know that. That is not going to get you a high band score. You have to focus on what you know, especially on the um, academic IELTS. So let's focus on what we know. Do we know the meaning of merit? Um, Laura says the benefit. Kyber says uh, the advantages. Yeah, sure, those are fairly close words, Laura, Kyber. Um, advantages, okay. And there's another word for merit um, that is accurate. So those are good so far. Calvin says excellence. Uh, for us, says maybe the characteristic. Um, another word uh, that merit is very close to is value. Okay, so value. Yeah, but if you're thinking benefit and advantages, you're kind of on the right idea. So we could simplify this title and just think the value of this art. Now, of course, use the picture. So here we have this big uh, blue uh, painting, it looks like, and this is what abstract art is. Abstract art is art that is unclear uh, to the viewer what it exactly is, okay? So in this case, abstract art using the picture, okay? is art that is tricky to figure out when looking at it. It is difficult to understand its meaning or representation. Okay, so you definitely don't want to just start reading a passage like this one because it would be very difficult if you're not really thinking about what this is before you start reading, okay? Now that we see this uh, painting and we understand that this has something to do with the value of this kind of art, we can think a little bit more about it, okay? Aesthetic, by the way, means beauty, okay? so. Um, maybe some of you know that, maybe some of you don't, but aesthetic is beauty. Okay, so we've kind of figured out what is abstract art and the steps that we want to take when we're looking at a difficult passage like this one is think critically. 
about the information quickly. Okay, ask what, why, and how. All right, so let me show you what I mean by this. So first I want to ask, uh, what is um, abstract art? Okay, and then my answer is, it is art that is unclear uh, for the audience. Okay, so my next question, nice and fast, is uh, why is abstract art created? Why does it have value? Okay, it's kind of the same question if you think about it. So what do you think, members? Uh, and I can see we've got lots of members in the class now. So uh, Baljeet, Kyber, Kelvin, Laura, Bandita, Faras, Pravasha. Um, why is abstract art created? So why does this art exist? Um, what is special about it? Why would someone at the IELTS Center think to write a passage um, about this kind of art or the value of this type of art? And this is especially the question, you can see I'm taking a bit of time, I'm drinking some water, because this is the question where you want to spend maybe even one or two minutes um, in the real IELTS exam thinking about this because answering this question well in your head before you read the questions in the passage and the uh, paragraphs will really give you an advantage to understand the passage. So Bandita says it looks appealing. Uh, Kyber says to give more freedom to artists for self-expression. Okay, so good, Kyber, I like it. To give more freedom to artists for self-expression. Okay. Uh, Bandita says looks appealing. Okay. Uh, for us, it has a really nice one. For us, with three question marks, but for us, be confident because I think that's a really good answer. Uh, for us, says to stimulate the viewer's mind. The viewer's minds to think, yeah, and feel as well, right? For us, so um, some feelings like happiness, sadness. Um, enthusiasm, those are difficult to capture with art. So maybe abstract art might help us with that, right? Kelvin, very nice. Kelvin says, to express emotion, uh, beauty, to make the audience intrigued. Very nice, okay. Um, and then three, how uh, does abstract art uh, get created okay so the next question is how does it get created okay how do we make abstract art and again um, those candidates who would be sitting this IELTS exam and who would see this IELTS passage and think about these different questions well quickly in about two minutes uh, of the reading, we'll do a lot better when answering the questions, okay? So how do you create abstract art? Maybe some of you already have made some abstract art and you have some ideas, uh, maybe not, but you can always take a guess, right? Kyber says, uses some kind of visual language, shapes and forms. Sure, I agree. I mean, if you look at the this painting here, you can see it's made up of a single color in this case. It's blue, different shades of blue. Um, it's made up of many similar kinds of bre uh, brush strokes, right? So yeah, very good color. 
certain colors, patterns. Okay, absolutely. All right. Think deeply um, without following a specific structure. or rules, right? So when you make abstract art, you're not thinking, okay, I have to follow these lines or I have to create this circle here, but perhaps as the artist, you're just moving uh, what you feel, right? Without being guided by certain rules or certain goals. Okay. All right, um, good. So now that we've thought critically about this, now we can read the passage. So again, students, in the real IELTS, this happens very quickly because you know what you're doing. You know that, okay, I'm looking at a passage which is going to be fairly challenging. The information is quite specific. Personally, I'm not a big artist, so I have to you know, really take the right steps here to maximize my IELTS band score, I feel like I did a perfect job in passage one, passage two, this right now is passage three, which is usually the most difficult in both the academic and the general. So I have to do my best to get all of these answers correct because I want a band nine. So I read the title, The Aesthetic Merit of Abstract Art. Now members, please read with me. Okay, so make sure that you are reading with me and read aloud if you can, okay? So if you're in a place where you can hear your voice, read with me aloud, okay? So here I read the aesthetic merit of abstract art. Okay, what is that? All right, I know merit means benefit or value um, of art. Abstract art is something to do with this picture they're giving me, which is, okay, it's a painting. It's unclear what that is. All right, my attitude, I'm focusing on what I know. I don't worry about what I don't know. So what is abstract art? It's some kind of art that's maybe unclear uh, for the viewer, like this blue painting. Um, why is abstract art created? Gives freedom to the artist, uh, creates emotions. It makes the viewer think about it, makes the viewer intrigued, guesses, makes the viewer guess about the meaning, um, talk about the meaning with their friends. How does it get created? Well, using some visual language shapes, forms, different colors, different brush strokes, not following rules, structures, goals. Okay, I'm starting to get a little bit of an idea of what's going on here. Now let's check out the questions, see if I can get some more help. All right, so I look at the questions, okay? And uh, that's my next step, okay? Step two. I read the questions for further clarity and help to understand the passage, All right? And it's happening fast like this in the real aisles because you only have 20 minutes left for this passage three, so you have to be really effective, okay? All right, um, so I look at the first questions, which paragraphs contain the following information? And uh, okay, this type of question, all of this is somewhere in the uh, passage. So I look at it and I understand it as best as I can without spending too much time. So the rejection of old rules of art, okay. Now in my mind, I'm paraphrasing this right away. Paraphrasing means I'm uh, translating this in my own words, not another language, still English, but in my own words. So refusing to um, follow conservative uh, art rules or art guidelines. Okay, that's how I would quickly paraphrase um, this in my mind and then I go to the next one so uh, different kinds of aesthetic value um, how would you paraphrase that members so what's another way to say different kinds of aesthetic value okay and hint 
we already have done most of the work on this because um, I gave you the meaning, the definition of aesthetic, and I told you uh, what another way to say value is. Okay, so when you're doing this paraphrasing of the questions, you're doing this in your head and you're doing it very, very quickly. Kyber says various sorts of significant beauty. Um, Baljeet says distinct types of um, beauty with merit. Yeah, okay, good, very good. Yeah, that's what I said, Baljeet, right? Value is merit. So various types of merit for beauty. Yeah, exactly, right? Okay, and I keep going this way. So two competing arguments about the abstract value or the value of abstract art. So two opposing sides about the merit of abstract art. Okay, at home, make sure that when you're looking at reading passage questions, you're paraphrasing in this way to expand your vocabulary and your comprehension, okay? Ambiguity itself provides part of the aesthetic experience. So lack of coherence creates um, some of the beauty, some of the beauty of um, the art, okay? Uh, the mysterious nature of abstract art, the uh, uncertain uh, aspect of abstract art. If you can't paraphrase, don't worry about it. Just understand it as best as you can and go on. Don't spend minutes trying to paraphrase questions. That's not the goal, then you will lose too much valuable time. Aesthetic value is up to the viewer. So um, establishing beauty is um, from the audience. Okay, sure. Um, and then here we have some multiple choice questions. Uh, multiple choice questions, just read the question. Don't worry about the answers. Um, what makes abstract art different from classical art? The way abstract art is different from traditional art is, okay, um, a common critique of abstract art is, again, I'm just doing some quick paraphrasing here. Uh, I can see that Kyber is also paraphrasing, which is good, members, you should be uh, paraphrasing this as much as possible. Okay, so a common critique of abstract art is that it lacks. So a common uh, criticism, a common criticism of abstract art is that it does not have lacks means does not have okay all right um why is it important to note that aesthetic merit not be solely reserved for the sublime okay um so why so it is necessary to mention that beauty is not just valued only in Uh, surreal imagery okay sublime is pretty tricky to um, paraphrase uh, you have to have really good English uh, but if you don't know what it means you can check the dictionary and use a thesaurus okay all right um, and then 36 while realist works of art explicitly show their meaning abstract works of art do what okay so um, at the same time that 
uh, classical art uh, shows clearly its meaning. Abstract art does this. Okay, so there's my uh, paraphrase of the original sentence. Okay, so again, I'm going through this nice and fast, and then I get to this question, the true, false, not given. Uh, true, false, not given, I don't paraphrase, I don't do anything with it because I don't know which one is true, which one is false. So I don't want to confuse myself. I just skip that and now I go on to reading the passage. So far, I understood that there will be uh, information about comparing classical art as well as abstract art or comparing classical art to abstract art. I also learned that there will be definitions about beauty, what is beautiful, what is not beautiful, okay? Um, Kyber says, with the paraphrasing, I'm learning and noting new vocabulary as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's the purpose of paraphrasing. That's a big reason to paraphrase is that you're improving your lexical resource and it helps you to think in English also. Okay. Um, when um, Sometimes you see those lessons online where it's like how to think in English quickly. Uh, one way to truly improve your thinking in English is to paraphrase in English. So you paraphrase within the same language that you're learning helps your brain to understand that language because you get the multiple perspectives of that language and you understand the mechanism of that language. So it's very, very good. Okay. Yeah, sublime, Tatiana, does mean excellence in a sort of interesting and unique way. So it's like a surreal excellence or perfection, okay? All right, um, now that we have done all this paraphrasing, uh, let's actually read the passage together, okay? So we'll do this together. We'll read the passage and then we'll answer these questions, okay? So here we go, everyone. Um, read with me again let's do this together okay and if you don't understand some of the words um, that is absolutely okay all right um, I can see that here I'm hiding some of this text so I'm actually going to use our other notes here for reading so that it's a little bit easier for you and I'll switch to the uh, website for this. So this is coming from our academic um, IELTS website. Let me just hop into my student account here. Again, students, join the website by clicking this big red button. It's one-time payment for lifetime access and you've got lots of materials in here. Um, right now, I'm actually going to use the audio from the website, the audio CDs and then uh, we'll hop into uh, CD4, track seven. Okay, everyone, get ready to read. Um, here we go, so let's read this together. Fisalia Fisalis. Why study philosophy? There are two schools. This one. The aesthetic merit of abstract art. Abstract art is notorious for its apparent lack of artistic skill, meaning and value. While its harshest critics believe that abstract art is not art at all, many art connoisseurs feel that abstract art is an aesthetically pleasing expression of the human condition. This article will discuss both sides of the issue and present arguments for and against the aesthetic merit of abstract art. Abstract art, by definition, does not follow the rules of reality. Until the late 19th century, artists had, more or less, stuck to the notion of art as representation of reality. Artists such as Gainsborough or Rembrandt followed the rules of reality with regards to light, perspective, physics and logic. Abstract artists like Jackson Pollock rejected these supposed rules of painting. Instead, Pollock made his own rules, or rejected rules entirely. The aesthetic value of works such as Pollock's, that is to say the ability for works like his to elicit pleasure when viewed, is the point at stake in this discussion. On the one hand, some critics feel that abstract art is facile, silly and indulgent. 
it is, on their account, a perfect example of the kind of art snobbery that the outside world finds so distasteful. Looking at a canvas covered in blue paint, we are meant to see something, perhaps jealousy, perhaps the death of human emotion, perhaps the bleakness of the human condition, but for many people they merely see a blue rectangle. It is not mere lack of imagination, however, that gives viewers the impression that the artwork lacks aesthetic merit. Many critics who have a keen eye for good art feel that many works of abstract art lack aesthetic merit. A common argument against these artworks is that they lack skill. Artworks by Rembrandt and Gainsborough are unambiguously works of profound skill. These artists committed their lifetimes to their craft and it shows in the virtuosity of their works. It is important to note, however, that aesthetic merit must not be solely reserved for the sublime. In comparing Rembrandt to an abstract artist such as Pollock, one must realise that there are many kinds of aesthetic merit. For example, there is the aesthetic merit in a sunset, in a beautiful sculpture, in a symphony, or even in a well-composed meal. So if aesthetic merit is represented in manifold ways, is it possible that abstract art satisfies at least one of those criteria? Many critics say yes. The value of abstract art lies, for some critics, in its mystery. Whereas realist artworks simply show and tell their meaning, the meaning of abstract works is hidden behind a veil of ambiguity. Perhaps the artist has an intended meaning, perhaps the artist does not. Additionally, the meaning for one person may be different than the meaning for another person. The key is that the painting does have meaning, but is meaning the same as aesthetic merit? Arguably not. Words have meanings, for example, but lack aesthetic merit. However, one might say for a painting or other artwork to have meaning is precisely for it to have aesthetic merit. Perhaps the real answer to the debate is that whether an object has aesthetic merit or not is up to the viewer. An object can have aesthetic merit for one person, but lack it for another person. So in this sense, abstract art is neither meritorious nor the opposite. Instead, it is whatever the viewer thinks it is. On this account, if a person finds an abstract work of art aesthetically pleasing, then that artwork is aesthetically pleasing for him or her. If not, then it is not. This answer, however, will not satisfy some readers, who desire a clear answer to the debate in question. For such readers, it is important to point out that ambiguity is inherent in all art. In fact, ambiguity is part of the aesthetic experience itself. So the fact that there is no clear answer forthcoming to the aesthetic merit of abstract art is not surprising. It is the nature of art to lack crystal clarity in order to invite interpretation and meditation, which are critical parts of the very aesthetic experience in question. All right. This so, recording is copyrighted by two... And that is the reading. And that's, I mean, that reader is fairly fast in the actual... IELTS, you can read a little bit slower and you'll still have enough time to answer questions and get that perfect band nine score. What's most important is that you read at a speed where you can understand at least 70% of what you are reading. Okay, let's uh, take a look at um, the questions now and then uh, we will um, be able to answer these together and I'm going to give you some more strategies on how to do this effectively as we go through, okay? So here we go, uh, number 27, the rejection of old art rules or the old rules of art, okay? So here um, we have uh, paragraphs A to G, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, seven uh, paragraphs. And we have to kind of figure out where this information is coming from. Now, logic can help you a lot here, okay? So reading the first sentence of the paragraph can help you a bit too, but it's best if you have an idea of where to look, okay? So after you read, or after you finish reading, you should have a good idea of um, whether the uh, information is in the first uh, one third, the second third, or last third of the passage. 
okay? Think about the question that's being answered. All right, so let me show you what I mean. So here, the first question, uh, question 27, is the rejection of old uh, rules of art. Um, what question is 27 answering for the reader in this case? Okay, um, can anybody tell me that before we try to give the answer to its, which paragraph this is, A, B, C, D, E, F, or G? So. Um, what question is this answering? Let me show you how quick you can be with this when you have a good idea of what you're doing. Okay. So, Kyber, Tatiana, Laura, uh, Cal Fum, Calvin, Maljeet, Prabasha, um, the rejection of old rules of art. Which question? Is this answering? Faras is saying this probably in the first third, and I think Faras, you have the right idea. Uh, why Faras? So, what question are we answering here? If you give me that answer, then your logic absolutely uh, will shine, and I think you're right. So, Faras says, I think this is in the first one third, which makes sense, Faras. Um, why? Okay. So the first third, and I do agree with you for us, by the way, based on just what question this is answering. Let me show you what, what I mean by that. So the question 27 is answering, okay? So number 27 answers the question of what is abstract art? Now, right, because we talked about this at the beginning. Remember when we said, um, what is it? It's uh, a type of art that refuses the rules of art, right? So the what and the why, they're often in the first third of uh, the passage. The why then usually goes into the second third and the how then continues second third, last third, right? Yeah, very good, Calvin, exactly. So Calvin says it, it's basically defining what is abstract art? Now think about it, right? If I'm the author, I would do this or I would give this information somewhere in the beginning, right? So you want to define your topic somewhere in the beginning of your essay so it makes sense. Is everybody clear on that? Okay. Um, for us, as I remember, we read about it, I think, in paragraph B. We can go check that out for us. I think you're right. Okay. Um, so abstract art, by definition, does not follow the rules of reality. So there is kind of um, the sentence that helps us. And it is true that with body paragraphs, the first sentence, the topic sentence, can be very helpful, but it's not always true. So be careful. Okay. So the first sentence of body paragraphs, the topic sentence, can be very useful um, for matching uh, information to paragraph type questions. But be careful. This does not always work. All right, so careful with it. Okay, good. So Kyber says, yeah, I got that. Awesome. So let's keep going. Um, and then um, we'll figure this out. So different kinds of aesthetic values. So various types of merit for beauty, okay? Um, this answers the question of uh, what do we perceive as beautiful? In my mind, in my logic, this would be an explanation that I would give somewhere in the middle of the passage, so somewhere in the uh, second third of the passage. So I'm looking for paragraphs um, maybe D and E for number 28, okay? 
So I don't just search or skim scan the whole passage. That's way uh, too confusing and takes way too much time, okay? So I start kind of in the middle here. Um, it is important to note, however, that aesthetic merit must not solely be reserved for the sublime. Comparing Rembrandt to um, an artist such as Pollock, m one must realize there are many kinds of aesthetic merit. Okay, uh, that's looking pretty good. For example, uh, there is aesthetic merit in a sunset, a sculpture, a symphony. Okay, that looks good. So I'm going to go with uh, D on that one. Okay, so number 27 is B, number 28 is D, and um, I'm going on to number 29. So B, D, and I'm on number 29. So I'll let you do this one, members, number 29. Uh, two competing arguments about the value of abstract art. So two opposing sides about the uh, merit of abstract art. Where do you think that would go? So what do you think? The first third, the second third, or the third third? This one should be fairly straightforward if you're thinking critically. Krizil says noted. All right, good. You're picking up some valuable tips and strategies here. That's great. Okay, so uh, two competing arguments, so two sides. One says, eh, abstract art is beautiful. The other side says, meh, it's garbage. Um, what do you think? Frost says probably the third third. Okay. It's not a bad guess for us. Hey, anybody else? What do you think? Kyber says, I think it's the first paragraph A. Yeah, okay, I like, it's interesting. Kyber says first third, for us says third third, and both of you are actually on the right track. So this is, um, introducing the debate, right? or concluding it. It's kind of like the question itself, right? The aesthetic merit um, of abstract art. So it makes sense that this would be in the introduction and or conclusion, right? So introduction and or conclusion. Now logically, it makes sense to look at the introduction uh, first, right? So intro, or conclusion. Uh, makes sense to look at the intro first. All right, so if we go back and we look at the introduction, uh, then we can look at it here. Abstract art is notorious for its apparent lack of artistic skill, meaning, and value. While its hard, harshest critics believe that abstract art is not art at all, many art connoisseurs feel that abstract art is an aesthetically pleasing expression of the human condition. This article will discuss both sides of the issue and present arguments for and against the aesthetic merit. So we can definitely see the two sides here. So I'm not going to worry about the conclusion because even if it says something similar in the conclusion, a is clearly a great answer. So I'm going to stick with A and then go on, okay? But for us, it's not a bad guess. There's something kind of like it in the conclusion, not exactly like it, but kind of like it, okay? So conclusion and introduction can be quite similar. So you have to be really careful and follow logic there, right? Start with the introduction, then look at the conclusion. If it doesn't clearly say that in the introduction, then look at the conclusion. If that is clearly stated in the conclusion, then it probably would be paragraph F for us. Does that make sense? This type of question, students, um, the matching um, the uh, information to the paragraph, the introduction and the conclusion are the most difficult to match, okay? Body paragraphs are usually easier to match the conclusion and the introduction are usually the most difficult to match up.
came introductory and concluding let's make this right concluding uh, paragraphs are the trickiest to match up correctly so be extra careful okay it's not as clear they don't have that clear topic sentence okay hopefully that makes sense all right Okay, um, and then uh, we're on to number 30. So ambiguity itself provides part of the aesthetic experience. Okay, so the mystery, not knowing, right? Lack of coherence creates some of the beauty of art. The mystery creates the art, okay? Um, where do you think that is, all right? For us, hint, here's your chance to shine. Okay, Kofam says, I think number 30 is E. So Kofam, um, careful, you're on the right track. So you're thinking, okay, that's gonna be the last third, right, where some of this question is being answered. So it makes sense. So this is gonna be uh, third, third, okay. All right, sticking these in the right places. Okay, um, yeah, so I would say definitely third third, which means um, F or G maybe, okay. Uh, perhaps the real answer to the debate is that whether an object has aesthetic merit or not is up to the viewer. Um, readers who desire a clear answer to the debating question it is important to point out that ambiguity is inherent in all art in fact ambiguity is part of the aesthetic experience itself so there you have the answer in the conclusion okay all right so that would be the answer there. Um, so correct answer, G for 30. Okay, now hopefully all of you were visualizing some kind of abstract art, like that blue painting, to help you remember all of this information. Okay. The mysterious nature of abstract art. So again, this is talking about what it is, why it is. Um, maybe somewhere around the second, third. Of the passage. So let's jump to uh, D. We already had D as one of the answers. And I remember it was about many kinds of aesthetic merit. So I'm going to jump to E. The value of abstract art lies for some critics in its mystery. So I have it there. I'm confident that's the answer. So immediately I just go back and label that as E. Okay. Now, here's an interesting, you, you guys were probably like, whoa, that was just so fast. What, what just happened there, right? Like, what? He got that so fast. Why, why did he do that? How did he do that? Um, remember this. This is an important tip as well. Okay, so the better use of strategy here the uh, greater the speed and confidence with consecutive questions Okay, so it's okay to start slow. As you will gain speed. OK, 
Okay, um, this is an important point, students. A lot of um, candidates in the reading section, they get really worried about time, so they start to rush through the first questions after the passage, and then they get more and more confused, and they slow down more for the later questions, and then they get frustrated, and they become even slower. They start to do more skimming and scanning, and usually their band score and their accuracy uh, decreases okay interestingly you want to take the opposite approach so it's kind of like um, the confidence in the speaking section okay what that means is that if you're slower for the first couple of questions and methodical and you take your time and you realize the correct answers, you build confidence, and you also build greater coherence of the passage. So for the later questions, you actually become much faster and much more accurate potentially as well, or continue to be accurate, if you will. Um, just like this one here, so number 31, the mysterious nature of abstract art. I was like, okay, so um, what is that? It's the unique nature of abstract art that's going to be the defining uh, feature of abstract art it's going to be the argument of the interesting part of abstract art the author will likely put that somewhere in the middle of the passage so two-thirds I remember we had D here which is also in the middle it's the various types of beauty it almost makes sense to put that afterwards so if I hop back to D and I realize that D is about the different kinds of abstract art um, or sorry different types of beauty in art then the value of um, the mystery of art might come afterwards after that it makes sense okay so um, does everybody get that? So you want to, in your reading, when you're doing the questions, you want to go slow and then build to fast. Not the other way, try to go fast and then collapse into slow. Okay, does everybody follow me? Because I see this all the time with students. They try to go really fast for the first few questions and then they collapse into a slow and confused state. Okay, I'm going to put this right up at the top for you. Okay, or at the top of the questions, that makes more sense. Okay, so it is much better to start answering questions a bit slower to establish understanding and confidence and then increase speed instead of starting quick and frantic, getting confused, and then collapsing into a state of slow uh, responses. Okay. All right. Kofam says that's very useful. Okay. All right. So pay attention to that, students. Okay. Last one here for these matching questions. Aesthetic value is up to the viewer. Establishing um, beauty is from the viewer. That kind of is the closing of the argument, right? Uh, so last third, 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 okay, already had a G, so let's uh, look at F, okay. Perhaps the real answer to the debate is, what, is that whether or not an object has aesthetic merit is or not is up to the viewer. An object can have aesthetic merit for one person, but lack it for another person. So in this sense, abstract art is neither meritorious nor the opposite. 
Instead, it is whatever the viewer thinks it is. Okay. Is up to the viewer. All right. So F is the correct answer and I'm confident and now I go on to the multiple choice questions. Okay, students, the multiple choice questions, members, I'm going to let you work on these uh, in your time today, tomorrow. Send me an email, okay, uh, with the answers to these questions, okay, as well as the true, false, not given. They're right here. You can look at these later. The video will be up on the YouTube channel. And of course, students, you can find um, the uh, this in the exams on the website as well. Okay, so as long as you have access to the website, um, you have your IELTS exam books right here. You can download these exam books and uh, then you can answer these questions here as well. Okay, so um, if you don't have access to our full IELTS package, I strongly recommend uh, joining the premium package. It's well worth it. Click that big uh, red button. That's for all of our viewers. Again, we have a great discount code for that. And I'll show you where to send the... Um, the aesthetic merit of abstract the art. The answers to this reading Abstract passage. art is notorious for its apparent okay. lack of artistic so, skill, meaning and value. Uh, there is my... Oh, there. <laughs> There, there's my email address, adrian at aehelp.com. So you can send your answers there for the multiple choice and for the true, false, not given questions. And I'll send you back uh, the answer key, okay, students? So again, um, make sure to check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Click the big red join button on the websites and you can use this discount code. Um, better nouns 25 that's coming from our most recent video that tells you not to use the word things and stuff in your IELTS speaking which is a good reminder there for everybody okay uh, Calvin says is it true that yes no not given questions are located in the passage in chronological order um, yes and no Calvin uh, so many of them are but some of them aren't it's true about 90 percent of the time okay good question calvin all right um everyone so uh that's uh it for this members chat class but coming up in uh, 30 minutes i will host another class which will be listening section part one and two practice we'll do that together so make sure to come back for that and join me in half an hour i will be here and i'm excited to help you with the listening section that will be an all chat class so everybody can join the chat. I'm Adrian, I'm signing out momentarily. Bye for now, thanks for your participation.